I'm Private Hudson, and I like shmups. I've played hundreds of them for the Genesis, the Saturn, and the Dreamcast. So when I saw this little title in a bundle with nine other possibly interesting games, I was curious and decided to check it out. It's called Asteroid Bounty Hunter. I saw some screenshots. It had a flying ship shooting asteroids. What I didn't realize was that the entire game would be nothing more than shooting asteroids. They tried to put some cutscenes and story in here, but it is laughably bad. The cutscenes are nothing more than black and white hand-drawn stills. As far as voice acting is concerned, it seems like there's only two people here. A woman and a man, and the man seems to voice not only the main character, but all the villains as well, with an awful accent. Asteroid Bounty Hunter features 25 levels that all look exactly the same. Each fifth level is a boss stage, which is ridiculously unfair. The first boss shoots projectiles that block your shots, and are occasionally shot in such a way that make them impossible to dodge. Like literally an entire vertical line of bullets with no room to pass anywhere. The second boss fight has three black holes circling around the area. They shrink when you shoot them and block your shots, yet the boss can somehow shoot through them. Also, nice level design here. It's always great to have black colors in the background when an environmental hazard itself is black. Brilliant. Oh yeah, let's go back to the voice acting for, for a second. The volume on it is so fucking low, and there's no way to control it. There's only sliders for sound effects and music. Now this is how the gameplay sounds like. And this is how the voice acting sounds like. Fine. Wasn't really thinking about running, to be honest. Today is as good a day to die as any. I'm not messing around with my editing software here. I put these on the same audio track using the same exact settings. As proof, this is how the voice acting sounds like in the middle of a boss battle. Brilliant. Aside from asteroids, the only other enemy type is bounty hunters. However, you only encounter a different type of bounty hunter unit after reaching the next set of levels, you know, the, right after you beat the boss. So, there's only four different bounty hunter units, and they all look exactly the same. They're pretty much reskins. Basically, every five levels, you encounter retextured asteroids and retextured bounty hunters that have a different shot type. The game does have a progression system, which isn't terrible if the game were any good. Over the course of your playthrough, you'll unlock different ships as well as level up your various weapons and shields. Each ship is a direct upgrade over the previous one, however the ship upgrades are universal so they will always carry over. Your weapons are your standard pulse laser, something that shoots a bunch of dog shit in a circle, a laser, and a worthless ultimate ability with a 60 second cooldown that sends a phoenix onto the center of the screen who then proceeds to shoot rockets 360 degrees for a little bit. The tooltip says this is your ultimate skill, so use it sparingly. Ultimate, my ass. By the time the bird gets to the fucking middle of the screen, whatever danger I was facing is either dead or gone. I think the dev has been playing a little too much of Dota lately, seeing as how these weapons are bound to Q, W, E, and R. Each level has three different difficulty types, as well as two other settings. Turning on bullet hell mode increases the number of asteroids on screen, while turning on bounty hunter increases the amount of those guys. You can have them both on at the same time, and they greatly increase the amount of experience you gain. If you ever play this game, which I urge you not to, then I highly recommend playing the first few levels on the hardest difficulty with both modes on. The objective of each level is to destroy a certain amount of asteroids. However, even on medium, those shits rarely ever spawn. To arbitrarily extend the playtime of this game, the bosses are cheap as hell, which creates an artificial grind. So by playing on hard with both modes on, you'll level up faster, reducing the need to replay earlier levels. Now comes the fun part of this review. The bugs. The game advertises itself to have mouse, Xbox 360 controller, and keyboard support. Guess which one of those actually works? Mouse doesn't. By moving the mouse, you move the ship. However, the sensitivity is way too fucking high. And if you use your second skill, the game automatically pushes you to the center of the screen. Lovely. Now here is footage of me using my 360 pad. Notice anything odd? Have a close look. My ship is constantly going down at a very slow speed. 
To play with a pad, you need to always move your ship up. Not only that, but the pad is nigh on unusable in menus. And for some strange reason, X is used to accept instead of A. Lovely. So yeah, this leaves us with keyboard as the only proper way to play this game. My favorite bug, however, is that if you have a multi-monitor setup, like I do, then when you run the game in full screen mode, it only launches on the first monitor. The solution is to set it to windowed mode, so it'll center on your main monitor, you know, the second screen, and then to re-enable full screen. To prevent this from happening, your best bet before quitting the game is to re-enable windowed mode, so that when you decide to play it again, god knows why, it'll show up on your main monitor and then turn on full screen, but fuck if anyone remembers to do that every single time. And yes, sorry for my poor England, I felt really ill that day. It is nice that the developer has presence on the forums and is receptive to feedback. However, Asteroids Bounty Hunter was released on February 17, 2016. Since then, it has had eight patches, and it appears as though more are on the way. What is interesting, though, is that the first patch claimed that a co-op mode would be released in one week. Uh, well, it's been three months now. Where is it? This is just hard to believe. Eight patches and the game still has so many glaring issues. I can't even imagine what this game was like at launch. Hell, the third patch note credits two players for discovering some bugs. Did the developer even playtest this? Did they think this was okay and acceptable to release it in such a state? The only good thing about this game is the soundtrack. It's mostly good, but the main menu song is obnoxious. Here's a tip, don't use a song with vocals in it for the main menu. I swear, every single time I'm done with a level, and then I go upgrade my ship, by the time I'm done and get back to the level select screen, that's the time the song finally gets to the point where the vocals start, and it goes, Take me blah 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 I just wanna blah 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 Oh, it's actually Creative Commons music, nice! Asteroids also dropped a foil trading card for me that was worth $1. That's pretty much what the game is good for, idle master fodder. Lastly, I'd like to apologize for the video quality of this review. I didn't realize I was playing at 2560x1440, but recording at 1920x1080. I didn't bother recording more footage to make this video look better, but still, I think I put more effort into this review than the developer did with their game. It's almost like this is Babby's first video game. Except it isn't. Last December, they released a game called Shiplord. Oh look, it's also a horizontal shooter. And it's got asteroids!